ladies and gentlemen, boys and no, gosh, girls. I'm introducing you because everyone missed you. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the person you've been waiting for, the person you've been longing for a whole week to hear from, Ashley Motherfreaking Nicole. <laughs> She's back, guys. You can relax. She's Taryn back. will not be taking over the podcast anymore. <laughs> Did you listen to it? Uh, not yet. <laughs> I knew it. Well, it just came out today. <laughs> well, we never listen to our own episodes. But also, there's a couple times that My I was like, My plan is to Ashley's listen to not it. Here, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Away. All of Away's suitcases are built to last with durable exteriors that can withstand even the roughest of baggage handlers. Every suitcase comes with an interior organization system that includes a built-in compression pad to help you pack even more and a hidden and removable laundry bag that separates your dirty clothes. For 360 degree spinner wheels guaranteed for the smoothest roll, even through the most hectic of airports and stations. And of course, a TSA approved combination lock keeps all of your belongings safe and secure. Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases at awaytravel.com slash advice. That's awaytravel.com slash advice. Today's episode is brought to you by Good American. If you haven't tried Good American Denim yet, you absolutely need to stop what you're doing and get yourself a pair. I seriously stopped trying to shop for jeans in person because everything Good American makes fits me perfectly. I love how it makes my body feel and I love how it accentuates every single curve that I have. The quality of the denim is amazing and the jeans are designed to hug every curve. Good American is female founded and one of obviously my favorite things, they offer a fully inclusive size range from zero to size 32. This denim is designed to celebrate every single body. And guys, they are giving our listeners an absolutely insane deal. Go to goodamerican.com forward slash advice, A-D-V-I-C-E, and use code advice at checkout for $50 off your first purchase and get your best butt ever. Again, that's code advice for $50 off your first pair at goodamerican.com slash advice. my plan is to listen to it <laughs> tell but, us you know <laughs> just so the people know it came out this morning so yeah. i haven't had a chance to actually listen to it but yeah i will the only reason oh, I, I did will. is because i genuinely didn't remember anything i was so nervous she blacked out so i was like i just want to hear a smidgen just this yeah just a tidbit yeah, yeah. anytime but- i do something on my youtube channel that i'm like that is different for me or that I'm like extra proud of, I, I'll watch it. But 90% yeah. of the time I, I don't watch my stuff. Um, but every once in a while I'll be like, same, same. Oh, I really liked that. Or yeah. I really loved how I edited that. And I want to watch it. So then I'll like, I'll rewatch it and be like, damn, that was good. <laughs> Dang, I'm talented. So well, fun. I'm good. <laughs> Hello uh, everyone. Welcome. And welcome back to the podcast with your two favorite hostesses. Uh, mm-hmm. Ashley over here, Taryn over there. Mm-hmm. We are reunited again. Um, I I hopped online and just looked at like comments and stuff, and everyone overwhelmingly loved your solo podcast. Really? Yeah. I saw. I got tagged in a couple stories, and people were like, "You did great," but I didn't know if it was like. You know, like when you're like, I'm so nervous to do that. People feel like the need to be like, you did good. Like, don't worry. It wasn't bad. Right. Right. But it was like very nice, the stuff I saw. So. I haven't seen anything Thanks. negative at all. So that means you did good. You did good, In their defense, kid. I did ask two separate times if they didn't like it, just not to let me know. Oh. So. Well. Actually, no. I'm not taking this victory away. It was a great episode. We'll never know. It was a great episode. <laughs> Um, you were definitely missed, though. Uh, I miss being here. I was talking about it. I was vlogging this morning, and I was like, we bulk filmed for Coachella and obviously mm-hmm. stage, Stagecoach, and then had to film on like different days than we normally do. And then obviously you did your solo episode last week. So I feel like I haven't been here in quite a long time. That's so it's true. Felt, it felt really good to wake up this, this Monday morning and know exactly what my day was going to look yeah. like. Because I was like, oh. I'm uploading, I'm posting, I'm getting ready, I'm mm-hmm. going to go record. And like, we have a schedule, and I think it we works have, well for like both for of us. But for years, we're talking three years now, mm-hmm. we have done this every Monday, and this whole like 
this whole month has been crazy. So it's it feels nuts. good to get back into the groove of things. I know. Because um, I'm I'm the type of person who just, I thrive on routine. Yeah, I yeah. love routine. I love like a spontaneous weekend, but that's it. <laughs> Weekdays. Yep. I need a routine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, you text me today and you're like, I miss you. I haven't seen you forever. And I was like, dude, literally. Yeah. I'm a stagecoach. But I feel like we say that all the time just to say it. Like, I actually haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, like, we'll just be like, weeks. oh, I haven't seen you in years. But I saw you yeah. a couple days ago. Yeah. Just going through Legitimately, with it's, it's been a long time. So yeah. I was like, hey. Well, Ash, congratulations on not getting sick. Oh, you know. I told them I, you were the like. The odds were not in my favor. Yeah, dude, not I in my favor. Getting it for sure. I literally, I contacted multiple people. I had multiple obligations I was supposed to go to. So I wasn't sure like how my test, because I did get tested, obviously. Yeah. I wasn't sure how my test was going to turn out. So I was like, hey, in advance, like. Here's the situation. A lot of people, there was like some one specific thing that was like crunch time because I had to be there that evening. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just giving you a heads up now so you can plan accordingly. I was like, it could be negative. It could be positive. I don't know. But like, it was scary. It was like one of the, I was like, oh no. That's the worst when you're just waiting. Yeah. I was just, the like the two days that went by after, even though I got my test negative, I was like, do do do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> is it coming? Every like, second, if you have like a tingle in your throat, you're like, yeah. oh God. I cough and be like, oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was bad. Alive. But um, I know, I think five people that got it this last There's like two, two weeks, week There's and a half. A um, so y'all be careful out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Be careful. Yes, I fully agree. Um, I was going to say, oh, you know what's funny? Um, So I was, I think I enjoy not listening back to our episodes Mm -hmm. because sometimes when I do, I find myself getting critical. And one thing people always comment on is how many times I say like, and I'm very aware I say like and um, because those are filler words, and mm-hmm. that means I'm just genuinely talking without thinking we when I'm saying those class, things. We know. Oh, yeah. So that was something I heard, and then I think because I was so nervous, I kept, like, doing this, like, popping thing with my mouth before I would talk. Like yeah. that? I know yeah. YouTubers that do that. I can't stand it. I can't stand it either. Yeah. If it's I'm like editing... an AS, It's an ASMR thing that kind of, like, gets in the way if you're speaking yes yeah so if i'm editing my videos usually i'm not nervous but every once in a while there'll be like a pop right before i say something and i always like trim that out because i hate that sound yeah but i think because my mouth was so dry and i wasn't having it was a full hour of me nonstop talking Mm -hmm. whereas with you we go back and forth forth while i'm talking you take a break vice versa i was listening and those two things I was just like, how do I, how do I work on this? Like, I, ugh, I keep saying like now. I don't know how to stop I, <laughs> without being very intentional and slow with my speech there, yeah. and taking a second, which is not me. Like, that's right. not how I well, talk. Well, first of all, I don't think anyone's condemning you for the likes and the ums Thanks. because Thanks. we all are in the same boat. We all do Thanks. that. Um, but I have had the same realization through YouTube watching my stuff back where All I said was likes and ums, and I would do like, um, like a really Mm -hmm. long one. Mm -hmm. So I also had to do the same thing where I had to like, I would, I would record myself filming Mm -hmm. something, saying something, and then I'd hear what I said, hate it. And I'd say, okay, take two, Mm -hmm. take a deep breath, relax. And I'd be like, hello. Mm -hmm. And it was always wild how high pitched my voice was in the first one, how fast I was talking and how many likes and ums I said Mm -hmm. versus the second one. I was in my like natural voice state. I was more relaxed and calming down. Didn't say likes and ums because I wasn't like trying to rush through everything I was saying. It's so crazy. I think too because you, when you have to repeat something, you've already said it. You already have your, the frame in your mind. Like mm-hmm. the skeleton of what you're going to say. Mm-hmm. So it's not as much your brain's disconnected and just spewing out your thoughts. Yeah. It's you've already kind of organized it and gone through. Right. So I think that's where because I don't feel like I say like and um as much as I do on this podcast anywhere else in my life. Okay. But I think it genuinely is because we both are so off the cuff the whole time. Mm-hmm. You say a story, I just say what I'm thinking. It, none of this, what we've said, is like rehearsed, even no. in this episode. Not even an outline. No, never. We're never prepared. But that's what's so cool about, I think, that's our podcast. That's why I like it. Yeah. yeah. 
podcast. Um, podcast. Sure. So it's so hard because I want to work on it, but then I also don't want to sacrifice why it's happening. Right. But I'm a little in my head today, so we'll see what happens. You know what? I don't think there's anything wrong if you wanted to. First of all, no one's saying that you should fix the likes and the ums. But <laughs> if you like, wanted mm. to challenge yourself, I see nothing wrong with a nice little outline. Mm-hmm. I see nothing. Anytime I have to do any sponsored content, I almost always make a, a quick little yeah. jotted note of like outline so I don't have to sit there and no, thumb yeah. through what I should say next. So yeah. maybe that would but be But I helpful. can't outline what I'm going to say in your story. True. You can't outline me. We're just raw we off the tamed. cuff, people. Miley Cyrus. I can't said it be best. tamed. Time. Okay. Uh, should we get into this yeah. or should we just They're keep sick of us? Catching They're like, up God, each Ashley other? coming back was a mistake. They're all, can you guys move in together so you can catch up on your own time? <laughs> your nails, are, uh, Taryn's nails for the listeners, are orange and yellow and giving candy corn in May. Ew. Ew. <laughs> That's all I see. I hate it. They actually, this, I painted them myself. Okay. Because I watched a show and had mad anxiety and picked all of my gel Was off. it candy? Yeah. I started it. I you started, started it, it yesterday. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys. I finished three episodes. I highly recommend. Mm-hmm. Jessica Biel kills it. Also, Justin Timberlake is in it, mm. and watching them act together is just so cute. Yeah. I genuinely love her. I love that. Couple, I love her. But... I think she's an incredible, phenomenal actress. And yeah. it's just, uh, it's so good. It's, it's so done good. so well. But I chose to watch it late when. Ryan was out of town. Mm-hmm. If if you guys are like, who's Ryan? Ryan is my brother. I have an apartment with my brother slash right roommate. now. Yeah, yeah, slash roommate now. And I haven't been alone in the apartment yet. So I was alone for a few days uh-huh. and chose to watch that show at night. Uh-huh. So I, I was a little more anxious than usual. But then I had to paint my nails because you know me. I can't yeah. go anywhere without like right. my nails painted. Same. But they look terrible up close <laughs> because I definitely Just fell asleep afar. on them too soon. You yeah. know, the sheet marks and bubbles. That's funny yeah. you say that because I went to get my nails done because mine were really, really long mm-hmm. um, and red. And I feel like it's obvious with bright colors when they're grown out. Yeah. So I like squeezed in an appointment. Normally I make an appointment with this guy that I've been seeing for almost two years now. Yeah. Um, but I squeezed a walk-in in so it was anybody and it was a new guy. Oh, no. And not only are they not the right shape, not only are they not no. uniform in shape, but the oh. he didn't even, like, clean the cuticles right, oh. and the polish is done wrong. So I literally the walked horror. out of there. I walked out of there, and I, I uh, guys, I tipped him. He was very sweet. Like, he was clearly, like, new and learning a lot, and I was like, no, honey. I originally was going to do a French tip, and I told him not to. <laughs> Yeah, you can I was tell like, no, right away. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, I just want it natural. And he was like, oh, you don't want the fringe tip? And I was like, nope. In my head, I was like, you can't handle a fringe tip. <laughs> you can't file? You can't do this. <laughs> You're not ready. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I'm not happy with mine either. But I was like, I paid for it. So I'm going to write it out. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. Me and Asher are a little <laughs> bit psycho about our nails. Yeah. But yeah. we also are very easygoing people. So just give us this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is our one thing that <laughs> we are nitpicky thing. about. So, so chill. relax. Chill out. Uh, you have a tear it up. I have a tear it up, guys. Thank God. And I, I really want to not say the title because it gives it away. But this is a good one. Okay. As you guys know, tearing it ups are when you guys send in funny stories. This is a funny story, so we can laugh at her. Yeah, <laughs> we're laughing with her. Um, but if you guys have any funny stories that you want to send in, you want us to read it. This is your time to go ahead and submit those. Okay, let's get into it. Dear Ashley and Taryn, if you're reading this, I'm so lucky to be chosen as your embarrassing story of the week. First of all, I love you both. I recently started an internship, and while driving to work every day, I listen to an episode of your podcast, and I am obsessed. Currently, I'm sitting in my car in the parking garage waiting for a thunderstorm to pass, so I thought I would take this opportunity to write my embarrassing story. My story is called blank because I don't want to say she continues I'm going to begin with some context a few years ago I was visiting my best friend in Toronto we are long distance best friends and only get to see each other a few times a year when we visit we love planning fun activities for us to do this particular visit we wanted to go to this Instagram immersive art experience where you take pictures with different backgrounds never have either of us been to one of these things before, so we were ecstatic when the day finally came. We went to brunch in the morning and we needed to kill some time while we waited for our time slot, so we walked through 
and around this underground mall that was attached to the subway. We waited in Starbucks and played on our phones while time passed. When we decided it was time to leave, I realized how badly I had to pee. We go down to the bathroom together, like girls do. I pull down my pants and I squat on the toilet. I never sit on public toilet seats because I'm a germaphobe and was too lazy to place the toilet seat paper down on my seat. So as I'm squatting, I slowly started to notice my pants getting warm and wet. Oh, God. I realized I had missed the toilet entirely and had peed all over my pants. Oh, so she was hovering? No. She was hovering and didn't have good aim at where the toilet was. Oh, yeah, that would shoot straight out. Yeah, 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 she... <laughs> <laughs> the angle. <laughs> this wasn't a few drops in the front that would dry quickly either. It was the entire back side of my pants where my butt is. There was absolutely no hiding it. My best, my best friend was dying laughing and I couldn't help but laugh too. I started to panic because we either wouldn't be able to make it to the museum or we would go and I'd have to take pictures in my jeans that were wet with my pee. Oh, <laughs> I, I quickly wrapped my jacket around my waist and made sure it covered me while I ran through the mall looking for a solution. I mean, that's a yeah. great that's a great solution. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Luckily, that's where you were. Yeah. Luckily, we found a store that sold shapewear. When we walked into the store, a saleswoman definitely thought I had gotten my period considering how I was wrapped in and holding my coat for dear life. I had to spend $50 on a pair of black leggings I was probably never going to wear again. Ugh. My friend and I sprint back to Starbucks where we went back to the bathroom so I could change. I didn't want to part with my vintage Levi jeans that I loved so much, so I had to put my wet pea jeans in a plastic bag I got with my leggings. We scurried to the subway and got to the museum just in time. When we got there, I was so anxious about what I was supposed to do with my bag of pea jeans. However, there happened to be a coat check in the front. I was absolutely mortified, but I knew what had to be done. I she did <laughs> not check. <laughs> she did not check a plastic <laughs> A, a blasting bag with heavy pee jeans. It's denim, too. You like know Levi's. that was radiating pee. Levi's. It's not like a, a thin, breathable material. It's like heavy, heavy denim. <laughs> she goes, I walked up to the gentleman and handed him my coat and my bag with my wet pee jeans. As he grabbed it, I could see his face change as he got a big whiff of the pee Oh, smell. gosh. Oh, gosh. Like anybody in my situation, I took my ticket and flashed a big smile and walked away. And that's the story about the time I had to coat check a bag of wet pea jeans. Dear Lord. But I thought the story was over. No, it kept going. The best part was to come. <laughs> she goes, but it does not end there. A month later, I was in my kitchen with my mom while she was going through our credit card bill for that month. She asked me what this random purchase was from a lingerie store. And then I had to explain to her that her 18-year-old daughter peed herself, but reassured <laughs> her it was use for emergency purposes only <laughs> you know how your parents give you a <laughs> yeah, credit card yeah, and say yeah, yeah. this is for yeah. emergency purposes only the moral of the story is that when in doubt take a few extra seconds to put the toilet paper down on the seat so you don't have to coat check a bag of wet pee jeans <sighs> love you both so much i hope you enjoyed my story sincerely jesse <laughs> that was so good it was that was so good so good it was Oh, so good! Because everyone, I feel like we get as as like tearing it up, go. We get a lot of like, how to pee really bad, pee my pants. Like we've had a so, few of them. This so one is many. exceptional. Oh yeah, <laughs> because so yeah, many. it's the circumstance. It's not yeah. just the pee. And like one of the unfortunate things about being female is having to sit on the toilet seat, mm -hmm. right? Like that. It's just a bummer. And if you are in any way aware of germs. You're just like, ew, and you don't want to. I can't yeah. tell you how many times I've awkwardly... I just went to Coachella and Stagecoach. The way you have to hover over porta potties is Do you is hold rough. the handle yeah. in back? Yeah, me too. I literally look like I'm like deadlift squatting. Yeah, me too. And I'm holding on for dear life while mm -hmm. I'm letting myself pee. Because if you like don't hold on to something, sometimes it's, your body's so tight, it's hard to pee. Yeah. Have you ever been in that situation? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Peeing for a girl is rough. Yeah. <laughs> In public places. I don't know why I always convince myself. I'm like, it's just your butt skin. 
Like, it's okay. That's what I tell myself. Like, <sighs> it's your butt skin. It's not it's near. it's still skin, and it can absorb. Well, actually, who are you to ruin? <laughs> I'm here to bring it down. I'm my rationale. To, I'm here to help you wow, sort wow, through wow, it. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, well, you know what? Starting off with a bang. Starting off with a bang. Again, guys, if you guys have any funny stories that yes. you want to share, please send them in because we live for stuff like this. We live it for really, your embarrassment. We live for your embarrassment, but also it really just balances everything out because yeah. then we can laugh about it and then we can, you know, cry. Yeah, and laugh have and cry serious and, time. And, an emotional roller coaster. Emotional roller coaster. That should be our next merch is us on a roller coaster. <laughs> Happy highs, low lows. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hands in the air screaming. Okay. Love <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Away. I just recently came back from a trip mm-hmm. and we have worked with Away before. Yes. And we were Big gifted fans. the most beautiful oh, honestly aesthetic. carry on size roller suitcases mm-hmm. I have a white one and a black one they have a hard shell mm-hmm. they have a battery charger they have a lock and they roll like butter like butter people and y'all butter. I'm not I'm not joking like I felt like I was flexing yeah rolling that baby through the airport yeah. so we are if you can't tell huge fans <laughs> Yes. Huge fans of Away. If you guys didn't know, all of Away suitcases are absolutely built to last with durable exteriors that can withstand even the roughest of baggage handlers. Every suitcase comes with an interior organization system that includes a built-in compression pad to help you pack more and a hidden and removable laundry bag that separates your dirty clothes. I had the craziest month of my life and that suitcase came everywhere with me and let me tell you that removable laundry bag was game changing. One of the best things that we love about Away is they have a 100 day trial on everything away makes so take the product on the road live with it travel with it even get lost with it for a hundred days and if you decide that it's just not for you you can return any non-personalized item for a full refund during that period no ifs ands or asterisks and then of course away has tsa approved combination locks that keep all of your belongings safe and secure Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases at awaytravel.com slash advice. That's awaytravel.com slash advice. Okay, cool. Should I just jump into mine? Yes, please. Okay. I'm <clears throat> I'm not gonna read my title either because I feel Perfect. like you know leave us wanting. Yeah. Hi Taryn and Ash. First off, I would like to stay anonymous, and I just want to say I love your podcast so much. It has helped me in ways you'll never know, and I truly appreciate you both so much. I need advice on something. <sighs> We're here for you. Let's go. Who are you gonna call? <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought you were gonna go yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, I need advice on something because I'm not sure what to do. I recently moved home from college, and today I was out running errands with my dad. We took his commuter car that he uses for work, and we ran to the grocery store to grab a few things. After we finished in the store and got back in his car, I opened up his center console to grab some hand sanitizer thinking he kept a bottle in there. There was no hand sanitizer there, but there was a bottle of pills. I read the name of the brand and the type of pill, but my dad got in the car, saw what I was doing, and quickly slammed the console shut. I tried to play it off like I was only looking at the logo and didn't see anything else. He lied to me about what the pills were, but I went along with it so he wouldn't get mad at me. Later, I went online to see what the pills were. I found that it's an extreme diet pill with horrifying side effects. I started to cry as soon as I read about the pill. My dad has had a history of dieting and exercising like crazy. I'm concerned that he may have body dysmorphia or have disordered thoughts. I know this isn't the first time he's taken diet pills. When I was like 10 or 11, I remember he had been taking diet pills and my mom found them hidden in a cupboard and they had a fight about it late at night. I remember this argument woke me up and that's the first time I realized my dad was struggling. My dad recently had back surgery and has been out for a few weeks. 
I knew as soon as he had his surgery, his struggles might get worse because he hasn't been able to move around or go to work. I'm panicking and freaking out about the pills because I'm not sure what to do about them. I'm so scared that if he continues to take them, he'll have a heart attack or one of the other scary side effects on the bottle. I want to talk to him about them, but I don't think he'll be honest with me since he lied to me about them in the first place. I also would like to tell my mom because I know my mom is concerned for him about this too, but I don't want them to fight and argue about it. I think I need to bring it up with him privately and hope he'll respect my concern for him, but I would appreciate any advice you both could give on the situation. Love you both. Anonymous. Mm. Wow. This is, I mean, I don't think we've really talked about anything like this on the podcast yet. Mm -hmm. No, I think, I think a common misconception, obviously, we've talked about this on the podcast before, is that like men don't experience stuff like this. Like, oh, it's, it's a, it's a very common thing to expect this for women. Yes. Because that's something women struggle with. And like locker room vibes yeah like if a guy were to be like oh i feel like fat in this outfit it's like oh my gosh you would get beat up yeah you know like that's not how guys talk so i pulled up some statistics oh hit us with the facts because you know you know i love statistics (laughs) in a recent survey of two thousand males in this is in britain where this took place almost half of the respondents said they're that they have body image issues that impacts their mental health half yeah half yeah that's nuts i fully believe that oh it's nuts yeah furthermore 58 percent said the pandemic had negatively affected how they feel about their body Mm -hmm. so hi same as like most women um the national association of males with eating disorders estimates that men account for between 25 and 40 percent of those with eating disorders. Mm-hmm. So still, yeah, it's less than half, but like like almost half yeah, of people close who to say, half. yeah. yeah. Um, and if you think about, I mean, it's that, I feel like that to me put it in perspective for me because I, I would pay money, money, that not one female out there could say that either she has not dealt with a negative relationship with her body or food Mm -hmm. or hasn't known someone in their circle that has. Yeah. So that's prevalent, right? Right. So if they're saying that men are pretty much making up half of the overall number of eating disorders that are out there, Mm -hmm. it's pretty much the same. I mean... Which is bonkers to me. (laughs) It's a human problem. It's not a female or male problem. This is something that humans struggle with. And I think we do have to realize that maybe if even if you didn't, let's let's pretend or say that you are someone who didn't deal with it before the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm currently rolling my eyes for yeah. those of you that are listening. Yeah, everyone's like, what? <laughs> Dramatically Hello? rolling my eyes. <laughs> it's a podcast We are on? all bouncing back from a very weird time in our lives when we weren't allowed to do anything but sit at home and yeah. eat. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So you either, I felt like we all struggled with certain things. We were either binging or we were freaking out or we felt ourselves binging. So then we forced ourselves to stop eating. Mm-hmm. Like we were like, in a bad way, yeah. not letting ourselves eat. Yeah. So those are two very opposite, but very similar situations where we all were freaking out about food. Yeah. And oh, our bodies. Yeah. And working out. Yeah. And how we looked now versus before and not realizing how dramatic the time period we were living in was and how it affected our bodies. So yeah. it didn't matter whether you were male, female, young, old. Like, yeah. My dad, for example, in his 60s, couldn't cycle really you know how you were like weren't allowed to work out for a long period of time he was like oh ashley my stomach it's getting big and i was like hey it's okay so is mine like it's like what are you you know what are we gonna so we we tried to walk we tried to like do our like planks and stuff but like he was freaking out in his 60s a grown-ass man (laughs) and i was sitting at home doing the same thing like it's male female doesn't matter your age we were all going through the same stuff so I think it's kind of a shock to hear your dad going through this because he's, you know, older, wiser, mature, like has probably, you would think, 
other things he could be worrying about. But no, like we're all human and this is something we all struggle with. Well, and I feel like when men talk about their bodies, like maybe you'll hear a guy be like, oh, I got this beer gut or like whatever. You don't hear it the same as when like a girl talks like you see like her crying and the pain and I'm struggling through this and Mm -hmm. and identifies it as like, oh, I struggle with body dysmorphia. I struggle with eating disorders, whatever. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, I had this thought the other day because I went into a store. Oh, it's going to bother me. It was it was a store that recently has stepped up plus size sizing. You went into the store? Yeah. And I'm I'm guessing it was like a H and M or like Old Navy something something okay. like that, right? And so and it's the store is this big push that they have like more inclusive sizing, and it's like great, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I I love shopping in the men's section. I just I I definitely have more of like a tomboy vibe, and so I love going for like flannels or shirts or like sweatpants, whatever. So. I went over to the men's section and I was a I was kind of weirded out because it only went up to XL everything. Mm. And I'm like interesting because the whole the whole push is this like body inclusivity like we have sizes up to like 4x now like yay we love all bodies Mm -hmm. but then in the men's section it was still just normal sizing. So then I was thinking and I'm like okay there are a lot of bigger men out there. For sure. Where are they getting clothes? And then if they're going into the store, because I know how it feels to go into the store, see something you think is cool, look through the sizing, and the biggest size they offer like, does not fit you. Mm-hmm. So they have to be experiencing that. And then how are they processing that? Like, does it depress them? Like, Mm -hmm. but they can't show it or talk about it. So where does all that go? Yeah. I (laughs) think, where does it go? I think something that's fascinating is the whole, um, inclusivity, body positivity is something that's being very spoken about and very loudly talked about by women. Yeah. Not men. So the reason we're seeing this push, which is awesome, by the way, is because women are, throwing their hands up saying this is ridiculous yeah, and we can't freaking find clothes to fit us but they're talking about it yeah you know how if you are upset about something you have to you know say something about it squeaky wheel gets the cheese (laughs) that's not true no (laughs) squeaky what's that saying i don't know but that's not right squeaky wheel gets the all the listeners are like screaming it at the top of their lungs (laughs) cheese i'm so sorry anyways but you know what i'm saying like Men are taught at a young age to not feel their emotions. So if they're oh, feeling, if they're feeling like sad. unrepresented, or if they're feeling not included by brands, no one would know because they don't talk about it because they're literally brought up not to talk about it. Like think about all the little boys out there who are trying to process through emotions that like how isolating must that? Be? Like, I mean, there's it just, stores like Big and Tall. Yeah, but, but like, like that's it. But listen to that's the name. Literally it, and that is not a nice name. <laughs> no, like I, if I want to get a shirt that fits my size, I have to go into a store that's yeah. called Big and Tall. Yeah. Like, and what if you need bigger and taller? Like that's not the, you know like you're forced to simply shop online, and ninety percent of the time the nicer brand names don't have that. I just I it's feel. Not fair. I feel like we need to check in on guys too and and normalize talking about these things but they're so it's so uncomfortable for them mm-hmm. because I mean it's I mean I don't think anyone's aware of this like yeah. I mean even me who's pretty like in tune with stuff that has to do with like body positivity like even I feel like recently only recently have I been like wait what like do they struggle with this? And I think that they do. No, they absolutely do. So moms do. and dads, if you're listening and you have little boys, like, we got to talk to them. Yeah. We got to make it okay to talk about stuff and to process stuff. Mm-hmm. But, oh, my gosh, all this getting back <laughs> to your story, Anonymous. Um, this is this is a tough one because, I mean, your dad is cl- – he clearly has a history of stuff and he clearly is going through stuff. So I think that however you approach this has to be very delicate. Um, 
And it, I mean, I know personally, like I, until you reach a point where you're actually ready to hear someone say something, you usually are defensive and aggressive and dismissive right. of people. So that's definitely a, you have a chance of that happening. But I think if you go into it with the mentality of he's hurting and how, like, whatever he says, like, I'm going to try to just not take things personal and convey, hey, I'm worried about you because I love you. And I'm worried about you because I want you around in my life. Like, yeah. I, I want to make sure you're okay. And if you're struggling with stuff, let me be a part of it. Like, let's, let's like, meal prep together. Let's, like, work out together. Like, I want to be a part of it. But... I'm worried that this option is not healthy for you. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I think the issue here isn't that he's feeling like he needs to lose a few pounds. I think the issue is the damaging results that come from these kinds of pills. I went through a weird period in college where I looked up those pills because I, I wanted too. them really bad. And I something very... Um, helpful was going through that list one by one and like looking into all of the issues that and side effects that come with those pills so I don't want you to like sit him down and be like you're perfect you don't need to lose weight it has nothing to do with you know like if that's what he's feeling that's what he's feeling and we're not here to tell him not to feel that we're here to tell him that there are healthier ways to go about getting your body into a place where you want it to be so if he's wanting to lose a few pounds maybe agree like Taryn said maybe Start working out with him, like start a, a, yeah. a meal plan and a workout plan and do it with him and and just show him that you want him in your life and you don't think this is worth risking his life over because essentially yeah. that's what the risk is. And I think if if it comes to a point, because I mean, from what I'm reading, like this is a this is a big issue for him. Like this is a, a long history of mm-hmm. struggling So, I mean, it's hard. I know you don't want to, like, bring your mom in and all this stuff. But I think for me, knowing me, how I am as a daughter, like, I I would be so scared if I didn't speak up and say something and something bad happened that I would, like, not be able to live with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would definitely tell him that – talk to him about it first, but then make it clear, like, hey, like – if, if nothing, if we don't f- do something about this, like I will be telling mom <laughs> and well, we will have a family discussion well, I about think, this. Like even, you know, like I think even going, doing research and maybe writing down some facts for him and just being like, dad, I know that this is so awkward to talk about and I know that you don't want to talk about it, but like as your daughter and like cry just cry like let him see like Mm -hmm. it's really affecting you and just be like as your daughter like I need to talk to you about this tell him like this is a common thing like a lot of people struggle with it but I mean ultimately I think he needs therapy like I think he needs bigger help if this is something that keeps circling this extreme in his life Mm -hmm. but that's a hard I mean that's a hard topic to to breach but I think as long as you start slow and you over the top communicate like I love you and I'm worried about you and I just want to make sure you're okay and I just want to talk to you about this, you know? Yeah, I think we you know the whole you can get he could get to therapy eventually, but um I would just focus on like this isn't the only solution. Like there's so many other yeah. healthier solutions. Yeah, they probably take a little bit longer to see results, but Again, this is a lifestyle thing. Like if he's wanting to change how his body looks essentially, then it needs to be a slow process. Yeah. Otherwise, very serious side effects can come that can cause yeah. very serious things. And mm. I think making it clear that um essentially him taking that risk is being very selfish towards his family. Yeah. I would focus on that. You know, I but think you're happy to help him, but Yeah. He cannot risk his life over this. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, I mean, I was like swiping on dating apps the other day. And I think so many men and who knows, it could be a projection of their own fears. Right. Mm -hmm. The whole you you put on people what you like actually think. Mm -hmm. Um, But the amount of profiles that in the bio say straight up looking for a woman who prioritizes health, like looking for a woman who's fit, like looking for 
uh, someone who like is serious about their body, like all these things, right? Where it's showing like out of out of everything, basically like I don't want to connect with you if you're not like a fit person, and and I think that a lot of times we have this view of men of like they're so they're always judging women's bodies and some of them are just terrible and they are but i think we we kind of see them as these like harsh people that are always judging us and we don't think that there are men out there that are struggling with accepting their own bodies yeah. you know but wow this was this was honestly a great topic i think yeah. this is a conversation that definitely needs to be had more but yeah i would i would definitely talk to him do it with love Maybe do your research and see how the, there's if you, if you Google how to talk with a man struggling with body image, there's going to be so Tons many stuff. articles. Tons so. of stuff. Also, again, I feel like I say this after almost every story, but you are a thousand percent not the only person. Yeah. Like your dad is not the only person, yeah. the only male going through this. So I know a lot of women or a lot of people are listening to the story and relating to it a lot, knowing someone or being the, the someone yeah. going through it. So you're helping a lot of people by writing about this. And I'm sure maybe even you could like send him this episode we could be Oof. oh my gosh hi. we'll take the pressure yeah do you want me to talk to him right now <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> look like i mean yeah genuinely like if, if that's too scary for you then maybe send him this and yeah. say like i was worried so you know yeah and i think if you talk to your mom and say hey this is what's going on we need to talk to dad just even even you use that time to encourage your mom of like hey I rem- I have vivid memories of you guys fighting about this, and I don't think we need to go it in that way. So, yeah. like, let's agree to be calm and collected and to try to be gentle with how we communicate yeah. because I don't want him to, like, be thrown off. Again, you know? that's why I would only focus on the serious side effects from the pills. Yeah. Like, you don't have to stop trying to change your body. Just do it in a healthier, yeah. better for you way, yeah. you know? Ugh. Well, I'm sending all the love, all the vibes. Yes. Um, and it's great. You're it's such a good be daughter. Great. Like, the conversation's going to go great. You got this. Yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by Good American. If you haven't tried Good American denim yet, you absolutely need to stop what you're doing and get yourself a pair. So I've been wearing Good American jeans for years. Something that has traumatized me for years has been trying to try on jeans in stores. I found myself on the floor crying uh, in multiple clothing departments Same girl. Uh, trying to find jeans that fit and I seriously stopped trying to shop for jeans in person because everything Good American makes fits me perfectly. I love how it makes my body feel and I love how it accentuates every single curve that I have. The quality of the denim is amazing and the jeans are designed to hug every curve. Good American is female founded and one of obviously my favorite things they offer a fully inclusive size range from 0 to size 32. This denim is designed to celebrate every single body. And guys, they are giving our listeners an absolutely insane deal. Go to goodamerican.com forward slash advice, A-D-V-I-C-E, and use code advice at checkout for $50 off your first purchase and get your best butt ever. Again, that's code advice for $50 off your first pair at goodamerican.com slash advice. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and dive into my story. This one is titled, Am I Emotionless? Oof. Something I ask myself every day. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> kind of. You being friends with me, you're like, okay, either <laughs> she's psychotic or I'm dead inside. <laughs> like, either Taryn is absolutely insane or I'm a robot. Yeah. <laughs> there is no beep, boop, beep. No other option. <laughs> Oh shoot! Maybe okay. that's why I'm friends with you. I love robots. <laughs> you know what? Star Wars, I'm, I'm you know? here. I'm here too. You are the droid I'm looking ground for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, they write, "Hi Ashley and Taryn. Please keep me anonymous." When Taryn did her solo episode, one of the things she touched on was getting over a breakup. It really stuck with me because what she was saying was not relating with me at all. On April 28th of 2022, I was dumped by my ex. I really liked spending time with him and we were together for another five to six months. 
This occurred when I had a huge life change happening to me in my life where I had to be put on disability and leave from work. It sucked in the moment, but I didn't feel anything negative since. I briefly cried out of stress. She adds in parentheses, I cry with every emotion. (laughs) Me. (laughs) And not needing the extra thing placed on me that night. But when I woke up the next morning and since then, I have been completely fine. I wasn't heartbroken despite really liking him and was extremely at peace with what happened. This also happened when I broke up with an ex in college. This is only my second ex, and I've honestly felt the exact same as when I was in a relationship. If anything, it has helped me feel more comfortable with wanting to show the world who I am and that I'm a bad bisexual. The only time I've ever felt crushed and pained by something was my senior year of high school when I saw my best guy friend, who I somehow fell in love with and slash had a huge crush on, get together for the third time with who I considered at the time to be my best friend. And now they're getting married. Since this, I have not felt anything remotely similar to this, like absolutely nothing. And I don't know if this is due to me being attracted to people after having a strong bond with them, as well as being bisexual, or if it was just because my friend had used me at that time, or both. For context, I am someone who doesn't believe in getting back together with an ex because you broke up for a reason, so there is no reason for me to try and try and try to get them back when it didn't work out the first time. And with my two exes, this rule has only solidified more because one, you can't convince someone to get back with you, and two, it happened for a reason. I have also been told by by multiple people that I am someone who has a high emotional intelligence and very mature for my age. She adds in parentheses, I am 21, and I've been hearing this since about elementary school age. Since getting dumped, I have been talking to this person who is basically the male version of myself, talking to other eligible individuals, both men and women, and feeling a more unconventionally whole self. Not to mention that I feel like I get to explore new things about myself I don't feel like I was able to before. I guess my question is, am I really supposed to feel heartbroken, miserable, etc., despite all of the great things I'm feeling now? Is it just that I know what my worth is and am not very emotional when this happens? I am extremely confused why I don't feel what the, quote, traditional feelings are after getting dumped. Anonymous. Okay. So since you haven't listened yet, basically, to sum up, I basically said in getting over a breakup, my number one tip is to take out the what if in the future. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I really want to get back with him. What do I have to do to get back with him? How do I move on from him? Who's next? All those things and just hone in and focus on who are you and who do you want to become for yourself? So that was my advice. Perfect. And I was just talking about how my breakup was rough and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's to catch up perfect thank so you because because she said i didn't feel anything in what i was saying yeah because she didn't have those type of reactions that even caused her to need to be like how do i get through this yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah i hmm. i love this because i think something that i've always struggled with is not feeling the stereotypical emotions when it comes to guys and, and dating sometimes um i think i've i've had conversations with multiple friends in multiple different and all kinds of different types of relationships where I've just been like, no. Yeah. And I've also felt that like very disconnectedness when it comes to people. And I think that's because I tend to not emotionally attach myself to people for a very long time Mm -hmm. until I feel safe. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think it's kind of interesting that you feel, um, which it sounds like that's what she is. Cause she's saying, She's sad about this guy. Yeah. And she's like, why am I sad about them? I've never been sad about him. But it's because they did have an emotional yeah. bond. So she sounds very similar, actually, to you. Yeah. I, well, that's why I, that's kind of why I picked it was because no breakup is the same. Right. No yeah. relationship is the same. Mm-hmm. No one person is the same. So Taryn and I could date a very similar type of guy, have a very similar type of relationship for the same period of time. And she could experience something completely different from yeah. what I experienced. Mm-hmm. Um the way Taryn loves is different from the way I love. Mm -hmm. And I think there is nothing wrong with either. Mm -hmm. And I think each individual person, including you anonymous have kind of like a, a love meter. (laughs) Let's call it it a love meter. Um, Where, you know, me 
for example, my love meter, I know where I feel safe loving. And if this is a newer relationship, guess what? I'm going to take my last time yeah. because I don't feel safe until I feel safe. And when I feel safe, then I will. I'll love you so hard, you know, but like it takes me time to get there where I know people that will dive in and love you so hard from day one. Yeah. And but neither is wrong. Yeah. So I think you putting yourself down or questioning yourself is kind of unnecessary because your relationships are different from everyone else's yeah. relationships. Yeah. I get the questioning when you hear someone talking about breaking up mm-hmm. and you hear, you know, people are I mean, that's like one of our number one things that is written in for us is dealing with heartbreak and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um I I think some people just are very aware when something was not meant to happen and are able to access that rational part of their brain to be like, okay, well, why am I sad if, like, this is what's good? Yeah. And I don't – I think I agree with Ash. I don't – I don't necessarily – well, I don't think – everyone emotes in their own way. So, like, I don't think it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I think it is something to kind of just – put a radar up of, okay, is this just my personality type and these things really were not great? Or have I over the years shut myself off in such a way that, yeah, I'm not feeling hurt, but am I really like fully going into things either? Because Mm -hmm. I think that's the danger, right? Every time my friends have gone through a breakup and are super hurt and they're like, I just, I'm never, I'm not ready to date. I don't want to date again. I can't get hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, I always tell them, I'm like, yeah, you might get hurt, but you also might not. <laughs> you might yeah. find the love of your life. And that's, that's the risk the of risk. dating. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's the only reason I'm saying that is I think if, if you are feeling these ways because you've shut off a part of yourself it is worth trying to figure out how to slowly open that up because mm-hmm. that's how you are going to experience beautiful connections. Right. But it could just be the way that you are. Yeah. And it could be that, you know, the next person you end up with, you experience this relationship that you're like, oh, my gosh, if you were to leave me right now, I would be devastated. Yeah. And that's how you know, like, there's someone that is worth like fighting to keep, you know? Yeah. So I think, I think you don't know what it feels like to find the one until you find the one. Yeah. So I wouldn't go too hard on yourself at all. Like maybe you connected with them on a very deep level. And they were meant for a reason, like to teach you something in life. I genuinely believe that people come in and in and out of your lives in seasons for a purpose. Yeah. And I think that it is your job and responsibility to take something from each relationship, Mm -hmm. learn from it and apply it moving forward to other relationships. If I was to, let's say, let's pretend I date 20 people and I didn't even bother to take what I learned from the first relationship to apply it to the next one. The, the problem's probably me. Like yeah. maybe all of these relationships are ending weirdly because I haven't like learned from yeah. the first relationship, you know? And I think that that is something that just, that life just does. And I think, I don't know. I think you can look into both of your ex relationships. If you took the time, if you want to do this, no force. If you want to yeah. force you. <laughs> but if you wanted to do some homework, I would break down both of your relationships mm-hmm. What was good? What was bad? What do you think they were good and bad at? What do you think you were good and bad at? And what you think you could do better in the next relationship that comes your way? Also, I talk about this all the time on the podcast, but I think if you haven't done it yet, look into what your love language is. I think Mm -hmm. finding that out for yourself and learning what your love language actually looks like, you know, maybe you don't even realize it, but when you go and like buy them a coffee, all the time guess what like you probably you know have a little feeling for them like maybe that's you showing that you love them or um finding out what their love language is because then maybe they're doing something that is an act of showing love and you're not even realizing it you know another thing we preach the Enneagram on this podcast so much but I think there is so much that you can learn from it specifically in relationships and I think learning who you are at your core will help you see when you are showing love towards someone and when you're not showing love towards someone and then vice versa when you figure out what their Enneagram type is again when they're when they're making things when they're going out of their way to show you love 
you'll recognize it more. Yeah. And I think that will help you form a stronger relationship. I'm not, obviously, <laughs> this won't work with just like everybody, but yeah. if you're feeling a relationship start and you're worried about having never felt something, then maybe like dive in a little deeper mm-hmm. and start learning about what each other's love languages are, how they like to show love on you. Um, and then I think that'll help you form an even stronger bond that maybe you've never experienced before. Yeah. Yeah. But I think what you're doing and the way you like took that moment and we're like, huh. Interesting. Why don't I feel that? And yeah. it caused you to just kind of ponder. I think that's a very, very good practice that mm-hmm. all of us can have. Yeah. And again, not what we've talked about with jealousy, comparison, everything. It's not that you're fixating on, oh, why does she have that and I don't? Mm-hmm. It's just, if you notice things in life, there's th- there's certain times where, you know, I'll do like a super insignificant one, but say, say you, I look, I come downstairs, I'm a hot mess, I have like all these bags packed because I forgot if I have like tennis, which pff, obviously I'm making this up because <laughs> why did I go with tennis? I never play tennis, but I don't know if I have this lesson or this and I'm and I'm throwing all these things in my car and I'm a hot mess and I look at you and you're sitting there writing this to-do list and you're like, oh, don't forget you have tennis at three and I'm like, how? Like, how, right? <laughs> yeah. So I can take that and I can look at it and not be like, oh, why is she so put together and I'm not, something must be wrong with me. But I can look at it and be like, huh, <laughs> something about that is intriguing. Something yeah. about that I like. So then I can look back at my own self and be maybe more intentional with maybe on Sunday night I need to sit and try doing a to-do list. Like maybe I can ask Ash, hey, how do you organize your schedule? And you can pull from things of when you get those little antennas that go up that are, you're like, mm-hmm. Why, why is this different? A little like, self-check-in. Yeah. I think that's such a valuable thing as long as you don't dig into saying, well, something obviously must be wrong with me if I'm not A, B, or C. Yes. Which I'm not saying you did. I feel like you do sound very emotionally mature, anonymous. But I think... I think that's a good, very self-aware thing to do. So I think it's, it's I think it's incredible. I think it's something a lot of people don't do. Yeah. Um. I think a lot of people are like, I'm fine. Well, I think they stop at, oh, I yeah. suck, and yeah. that's it. They'll go be. I don't feel that. I must be broken. Continue. And then you just go on with life, being like, yeah. oh, I'm the I worst. I must be broken. Yeah. yeah. Instead and, of like sitting there and questioning it and wondering, like, am I or yeah. is this normal? I think that's super healthy. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. The moral of the story. This was no one relationship is the same. No No one person loves the same. Nope. Uh, To compare is to slowly kill yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And I think just be more gentler on yourself and be open to having more serious relationships when it comes because it will come. Oh, it'll come. It always comes. It always comes. It's a good one. Ash. Yeah. Last episode, I was like, oh, I finally get to do a dad joke and I don't have to worry about Ashley being like, oh, it's, this dad joke sucks. And then I said it and immediately just felt so uncomfortable because you no weren't there, there to like, <laughs> even like, even your fake laugh is yeah. like better than nothing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, on to the dad joke. Okay. Why wasn't the woman happy with the Velcro she bought? Stick. <laughs> it didn't stick. It, it was a total st- rip off. Oh my god! <laughs> stick, <laughs> <laughs> guys. If you made it to the dad joke, you already know we love you the most. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for listening to this podcast. Um, we wouldn't be here without you guys, and we're so happy that we get to do this. Um, if you have any stories you want to share, then please submit them now. <laughs> do it right now. Um, okay, we'll talk to you guys in the next episode, which will be coming soon. Love you. Bye. Bye.